Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One Good Vibrations. There are several different types of connectors that you can use with coaxial cable. And I sometimes get questions about uh, whether, for example, you can use a PL259 type coaxial connector with 75 ohm coax uh, rather than 52 ohm coax, which is what a PL259 or SO239 connector are designed for. Connectors do have an inherent characteristic impedance, just as coaxial cables do. And in ham radio work, the most commonly used coax is 52 or 50 ohms. But once in a while, you, you'll want to use a 75 ohm coax, which is much more easily available at common stores, uh, hardware stores and things like that. Now that our venerable Radio Shack physical stores are gone, <clears throat> You have to order from Radio Shack online, and I hate ordering things online. I, you have to hit every button just right, and it's, it takes almost as long to order something online than it would have to, take, to drive down 15 miles to Spearfish to the Radio Shack store that used to be there, get the stuff, and drive back. I mean, because and, and, and it, it seems to me like half the time, the, uh, I, I hit the wrong button, it says your order cannot be processed because such and such a, a number does not exist or this or that or the other. You know how computers are. They're, they have uh, somebody, Murphy somewhere, speaking of Murphy as I have in the last video, Murphy really got her claws into, into computers because they sometimes seem almost as if they're programmed to aggravate me, at least me, how about you? But the point is, coaxial cables commonly used in ham radio are either 50 or 75 or 72 ohms thereabouts, which is roughly a 1.4 or a 1.5 to one mismatch. Similarly, coaxial connectors for, co uh, for cables are designed for a characteristic usually of either 50 or 75 or thereabouts ohms. Uh, a mismatch again of 1.4 or 1.5. So if you put the wrong type of coaxial connector onto a cable, for example, you use 75 ohm coax with a PL259 designed for 52 or 50 ohm coax, you're going to have an impedance bump, which creates a standing wave ratio on that coax of about 1.4, 1.5 to 1. Well, I remember reading in one of the old editions of the ARRL Antenna book, and that's a very good book, by the way, to get even today. It's a must-have for every antenna enthusiast, I would say. Or the ARRL Handbook should have this information you'll see that a two to, up to a two to one standing wave ratio can be tolerated no matter how lossy the coaxial cable is to begin with, that is perfectly matched, and no matter how high, uh, no matter how long it is, how lossy it is, a two to one standing wave ratio or impedance bump of up to two to one won't cause any additional loss over and above that which effectively exists in the system if it were perfectly matched. Well, yes, there will be a slight loss, a fraction of a decibel, but a decibel is defined as the smallest detectable difference in signal strength that a user or a listener can detect if he or she is expecting it. So any decibel loss less than one decibel 
is inconsequential. It's so small that it doesn't matter. And no mismatch <clears throat> of coaxial connectors will ever produce more than about a 1.5 to 1 standing wave ratio. And the charts will tell you that under no circumstances will it ever produce even one decibel of additional loss. So what I'm getting at is if you got coaxial cable on hand and you got connectors that you can fit on solder onto the cable somehow or another and you can make them watertight, just wrap them with electrical tape, then for all intents and purposes, you're good to go. Forget about the loss. Forget about the standing wave ratio. Your transmitter will take care of it if it has any kind of antenna tuning system in it, which almost all of them do. They'll always take care of a 1.5 to 1 mismatch. So all this ado about using the perfect connector, well, it's, it's great if you can use a connector that's designed for exactly the type of cable that you are using. But it is not necessary and the world won't come to an end if you use the wrong one. In fact, the difference in the practical real world will amount to zero. Nothing. So hook that sucker up, get her on the air, and make some contacts. Stanja Belisco, W1GV, signing off. Saying 73 and so long, which, in my native fist, regardless of the coax or connector type, always translates into da-da-da-da-da.